Today we're going to go over five key tips for amazing pickleball volleys so that you can gain total control over your volleys. I'm Nicole Havlicek, this is Primetime Pickleball, let's get into it. Missing one of our videos is like missing an easy put away. Don't let that be you. Subscribe now. Tip number one is that you can train and work on your volleys anywhere and at any time. Now what do I mean by this? Well, one of the beautiful features of volleying is that the ball never actually touches the ground. You're hitting it out of the air. So you don't need a good bounceable surface like a court. So you don't need to be on a court. You can be on grass. You can be doing it in the pool. It can be snowing. Uh, you can do it on gravel. You can do it on brick. Just so long as you're not doing it on an uneven surface where you'll injure yourself, you need to have stable footing, but the ball doesn't need to bounce true because the ball will never hit the ground. So you can really use any reasonably flat surface as long as you won't lose your footing in any way, and you can do it with a partner or against a wall. And what goes hand in hand with being able to work on your volleys from anywhere is that it opens up so much opportunity for you to also do them therefore at any time. For example, as you can see here, Taylor and I are hitting volleys out on the grass. Right behind us, there's four pickleball courts and they're totally full right now. The time slot that we have booked on these courts is not coming up for another 20 minutes or so, so we decided to go ahead and get in the little volley training on the grass. So anytime you find yourself waiting for court time, maybe you can go off to the side and work on some volleys with a partner. Tip number two is to have a slight knee bend and a slight forward tilt with your upper body. So you don't want to be standing straight up with your knees locked, nor do you want to have your torso straight up. And you don't want to be in a deep squat either. If the ball goes low and you have to have a low contact, for example, you're trying to take the ball as a volley and reaching into the kitchen, then yes, get low with your knees, but you don't have to stay there. You can come back out of it, but you do want to have a slight knee bend, a slight athletic stance so that you can engage your legs somewhat as you're hitting those volleys. You want to have your toes pointed forward because you're going to be up towards that non-volley zone line when you're volleying. If you have to move to one side or the other, then you can use a bit of a shuffle step, but you don't really ever want to step forward because obviously that would be a fault because you're stepping into the kitchen since you are typically up at the kitchen when you're volleying. If you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell icon so you can be notified anytime we release a new video. Tip number three is that you want to have Goldilocks elbows. Now, what do I mean by that? So you want to have your elbows just a little bit out in front. You don't want to have them straight out and arms locked out in front like this. And you don't want to have them so relaxed that they're, they're by your side and basically stuck against your body. Now, one of the main reasons you don't want your arms straight out in front of you with elbows locked and holding your paddle up high is that when you're up at the non-volley zone line, the ball is never going to be coming that high. And if it is coming that high and hit hard, then there's a very good chance that it's going out. You're not really ready in this position. It's kind of like a fake ready position because you're typically going to be contacting shots when you're up at this position lower than where your paddle would be in this position. So you'll be contacting most of your volleys in this range here. And if it's a low volley, it'll be down here. Rare, very rarely, unless it's an attackable ball, will you be making contact up here. And conversely, you don't want to have your arms and elbows down resting against the side of your body like this either, because then you're very prone to having late contacts and that's not what you want. You want to have your elbows just a little bit more in front of that so that when you reach out to volley, it's almost right there. You just have to kind of like lay your wrist back and the volley should be right there. And if you have to reach a little bit, then you can do that as well. But you don't want to be tucked down because then you'll just go to the side and have your elbows forward and then just go a little bit more forward to meet the ball and meet your volley. And that will lead to a very strong and stable volley. So not too straight, not too bent and down, just right and a little bit in front. So that's why I've called them Goldilocks elbows. When you implement the tips we're sharing in today's video, we're confident it will help your game. As helpful as these tips are, they're only part of the story when it comes to playing winning doubles pickleball. 
If you want to learn all the strategies you'll need to dominate the doubles court, then you'll want to check out our complete doubles system so you have a clear A to Z plan to follow. Because when you have a clear and proven plan, you can confidently and systematically win more points in games and have more fun on the court. Go to doublesystem.com today to learn all about it. All right, let's get back to today's video. And on to tip number four, which is just a gentle turn on your volleys on both the forehand and on the backhand side. You're not going to do a full shoulder turn, pointing both your shoulders towards the side like you would on ground strokes on both the forehand and the backhand side because you don't need a big backswing and you don't need a big follow through. There's already a lot of energy coming on the ball, so you really just need to reach your paddle out and give it a push back. If you need to put a little bit more energy on it, use your legs to just send some more back in. But you're really mostly redirecting all the energy that's already on the ball and just redirecting it back. Therefore, you don't need a big swing in the back and you don't need a big follow through in the front. And also there's really no time for it because up at the net, things are happening a lot quicker, especially if they're up at the net. Your setup and your shot have to be quick. You have to be back to your ready position quick and then ready again for the next shot. The key of putting power back on it is really about the timing of your push and your contact through the ball with your paddle rather than it is taking big swings. You want to focus more on learning how to redirect that energy back with correct timing of putting your kinetic energy back into the shot rather than having to create a lot of energy with swings because like I said the energy is there you don't need a whole lot you just have to receive and send it back. So remember no big turns and no big swings because a there's no need for it and b there's no time for it. And last but not least, tip number five, which is finishing height. Now, depending on the height of where you hit your volley, whether that be high, mid-level, or low, your finishing height will vary. So typically, if you're contacting high, finish high. If you're contacting mid-level or medium, finish mid-level, medium. If you're contacting low, finish medium. Okay, so in general, those rules of thumb will apply. If you are contacting high and driving the ball through the court, like through your opponent hard or around them and you're aiming deep, yes, start high, finish high. If you're angling your shot off, meaning you're hitting it shorter in the court and to a sharper angle to get it going off the court towards the side, then you may be hitting a bit high to high medium so you're not going to be going from high to low medium or very low but you may be coming a little bit down but in general you are going to start high and finish on the higher side to be clear but the key thing to avoid here which is what mainly i'm getting at with this point is that you don't want to be starting high and finishing low so no chopping down in any case now with these five tips in mind, get out there and get to work on your volleys. We're about to show you how to do just that because having rock solid volleys that you can rely on and can place anywhere you want on the court will certainly go a long way towards lifting your level of play. You can volley forehand to forehand just like Taylor and I are doing now. You can also go backhand to backhand. Next, you can hit your forehand to your partner's backhand. After that, they can hit their forehand to your backhand. Then you can move on to figure eights. In this version here, I'm going across and Taylor is going ahead. So I'm going across with my forehand to Taylor's forehand. He then goes ahead by taking his forehand to my backhand. I go across with my backhand to his backhand. And finally, he goes ahead with his backhand to my forehand. And around we go again and again in that same pattern. We can then switch roles and I go ahead while he goes across. A big thank you to Taylor Bryant and Simone Havlicek for their help with this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. For more pro player pickleball tips, techniques, strategies, and more on how to take your game to the next level, please visit primetimepickleball.com. You'll find a clickable direct link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, and until then,
Happy pickling!